Welcome to Beginning Quilt Making Part 2, Fabric Anatomy. The physical characteristics of cotton are very interesting. It is crystalline in structure so that it chars before it melts, unlike polyester. If it is exposed to water or steam, it will swell. And upon drying, it returns to its, its natural shape that it's dried in. If it's dried in a wadded up ball, there will be tons of wrinkles. If it's smoothed flat and dried flat, it will be flat. When you have wrinkles in cotton, a quick shot of steam will bring the fibers back into their natural position. But with that being said, if you are using steam during patchwork, you have to be very careful to get all of your seams laid out straight and flat before you use your steam because it really does freeze them into that position. The next quality that we're going to discuss about cotton is stability. Cotton fibers themselves are relatively stable and do not stretch or shrink. However, the cotton fabrics do shrink as a result of the tensions that are put upon them during the process of weaving. For demonstration purposes, we have here a child's potholder loom with nylon loops. I couldn't find the cotton loops, so this will have to suffice. Whenever fabric is woven, it is the same principle as what I'm about to show you, but on a much, much larger scale. You have your crosswise and lengthwise threads, and say this is a shuttle, it would go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. <laughs> And then it would reach over here to get a loop of thread and pull it across. And that would go back and forth many times, back and forth for the weaving process. Now, when we say that cotton fabrics do shrink as a result of tensions applied during the weaving process, what we mean is that this pot holder was actually woven on this loom, and it is pulled and stretched taut for the weaving process, and then as the edges are finished, you can see that it pulls in a very significant amount probably at least 25, maybe 30 percent shrinkage once it's off the loom. Now another thing that's really interesting about this is because it is woven, it has the same dynamics as fabric, and you'll notice that we have a little bit of stretch on our warp and our weft, or our lengthwise and crosswise grain, but when it gets to the bias, which we will discuss here in a minute, Look at all the stretch that we have on that 45 degree angle. So with any woven fabric, you have the same concepts. Now we're going to discuss the durability of cotton fabric. Cotton will decompose gradually after long exposures to dry heat and it becomes brittle and extreme cold. It will deteriorate from mildew and that will result in rotting and loss of fiber strength. Another condition which cotton fabric doesn't like <laughs> is direct sunlight. Direct sunlight will rot and deteriorate the material very quickly. It breaks down the strength in the actual fiber. One of the things that most quilters fear are moths. But moths actually do not damage cotton. They like to chow down on wool not cotton. So if you get a moth in your cotton, you're safe. What really likes to eat your cotton fabric is silverfish. Do -dum, do -dum, do -dum. These are the bad guys. And what they actually like to eat is not the cotton fabric itself. It's our good old-fashioned starch. They love to eat starch. 
So what you really want to do if you're going to prepare your fabrics for quilting and let them set for a long period of time, possibly you want to consider using a starch alternative such as Mary Ellen's Best Press. It's not an actual starch that has um, cornstarch in it, but it's an alternative and it's a safe product to use on your fabrics to even to press them and then let them set for a while. We won't get any of the bad guys trying to eat our cottons. Hmm. Why do we collect fabric? Hmm. Because quilters love it. We love fabric. We collect every little bitty piece of it together that we can, then we sew it up and we make a big beautiful quilt out of it. We should have all those shades of fabric because we're not painters. We don't have a palette where we can mix one shade of paint with another shade of paint to create a new shade, our palette has to already be ready for us to cut up and sew back together. When you choose fabrics for quilt making, there are a variety of things that you should consider. You should consider the fiber content. I personally like 100% cotton. The thread count, the shrinkage, the color fastness, you don't want any white quilts becoming red and pink instead of red and white. And you should only choose 100% high quality quilting cotton fabrics. According to the National Cotton Council of America, cotton is now the most popular fabric worldwide. And the cost of cotton depends on a variety of factors. The quantity of the crop, which is affected by weather and pests, the quality of the crop, the type of cotton. There is sea cotton and there is inland cotton. The printing and finishing process, the costs of the chemicals used in the printing and finishing process, the equipment costs, labor costs, and of course the demand by the consumer. That's us quilters. According to a study done by the National Cotton Council of America. <laughs> Stop it. What did I do? According to a study done by the National Cotton Council of America, cotton fabric. <laughs> mm. Don't even look at me. <laughs> According to a study done by the Counton. According to a study done by the National Cotton Council of America. <laughs> I'm not. When you buy fabric, you really need to choose the highest quality that you can. I will just edit that. <laughs> How is it going so far? It was Stop awesome. It. Stop it. Stop it.